Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Final Plan, the Friday morning show where James and I have a rundown of what we're planning for this weekend. Game week six. How are you, James? I'm all right, mate, yourself? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, so the show is called The Final Plan. Do you have a plan? No. I don't have a plan. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Not no a clue. idea. I mean, Let's, uh, an enviable position of having two free transfers and really not knowing where to start. Mm. Basically it's not, because of it's Mason not, Mount. It's not a case of, uh, for, for me, it's not a case of not knowing what to do, but there's three or four choices and not knowing which is the best one. I'm not kind of stuck in complete paralysis. Um, shall we get a bit of admin out of the way first for Go the for listeners? Uh, we've been talking about a live show uh, for quite a while around end of November, December, like a pre-Christmas live show for everybody on November the 23rd when West Ham plays Spurs. That is not going to be the day <laughs> of the live show. Um, and so let's just put it out there. Because a few people have tweeted and said, what a great opportunity for a live show. Firstly, I'll be at the game. I don't know if you're going to try and get away tickets. Maybe. Uh, maybe if not. it's on the telly, I probably won't bother. Well, it is 12.30, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'll be at the game. James will be watching on TV and we will not be doing a live show on that day. Done. End. <laughs> Correct. Um, Mason Mount. Oh, what do we do with him? See, what wait. I was... What, what, Firstly, wait till Frank's well, presser. Well, yes, we're recording before Lampard's press conference. If he's just going to miss this weekend, he has to stay in. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I bought at 6.2. He's currently 6.5. I'm going to want him back. I've looked at players at the same sort of value. So, you know, if you're stuck like me, I've got two free transfers, so I can make bigger moves. But a lot of people will have one free transfer, not knowing what to do. Mate, if you look at midfielders in and around this price range, it's fucking shites, mate. Yeah, there isn't many options. You have to go a little bit more expensive. If you want to get to um, maybe Lanzini or Madison or any of these guys, even Madison's had a rise to 7.1. Um, there, there is very little in and around his price. You probably will either drop down to McGinn, Ceballos, Campwell, um, or you have to go up. You have to go one way or the other. You can't really stick. Yeah, McDaniel James is an injury doubt as well mm. at the moment. 6.2 would have kind of maybe felt like an easy one. Lots of people mentioning Lamella. You know the rotation risk there. Best choice probably is Buendia. But do you want to be in a position where you're going to end up with like Puki, Cantwell, Buendia? Because you know they're going to have a sticky run at some yeah. stage. Absolutely certain. The other likes of Lanzini wouldn't consider. No, it's not great, man. It's no. fucking picking bones, even coming down to like Harry Wilson at six. I don't know if he's a rotation threat. So when he got injured, Mason Mount, I was clearing my mind what I was going to do. I was going to move to Cantwell. Yeah. And then just take a week to take stock and figure out the best move from there. What's become evident to me is Mason Mount at that value is clearly the best choice. And beyond the Liverpool game, a lot of us are going to want him in our team. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, a stomach it. Like if you bought him at six million as well, if you one of the really early ones, and he's possibly only going to miss this weekend, yeah, you just hold it through. My advice is quite different, to be honest with you, mate. Okay. I want everybody to sell him because I need his <laughs> price to go down so that I can buy him. So uh, yeah, if you're a Mason Mount owner, he's probably going to be out for about a month and uh, you should hit sell straight away. He's been bought this week. By 248,000 managers. Wow. He's been sold by a hundred and, I had it right in front of me, 113,000 managers Jeez. in equal measure. Um, so this is the, another example of why sometimes going early can not work out in your favour. Having said that, if you got him before he's had a, a, a price rise or what have you, then and he's worth it. He's, his ownership is 23.7%. It's decent. It's not in the stratospheres of the the Salas and the um and that kind of thing pookies and all of that but 23 percent is still a decent enough number and you can only see that going up to 30 35 percent in the next few weeks right yeah i mean if, if he's back fit it, there's gonna the investment's gonna continue on him with those fixtures chelsea have, have got coming up you're gonna want some coverage on the other side be it a mount or an abraham or a possibly even a, a tamori not what we overly advised to dive into Chelsea defensively yet but no, that run but of six, yeah, that run of six there, fixtures is great isn't Tamori it? is just the value is so tasty isn't it at 4.5 million when are you going to get a Chelsea defender at 4.5 million I suppose this season when they're conceding goals in every single game you're going to get Chelsea defenders for 4.5 million 
Um, so I, um, for my game week six, I had a bad fight game week five, looked at the wild it's card. saying you haven't got Mason Mount. I haven't so got Mason Mount. Yeah. So I'm, I'm chilling with that. Um, having said that, in my wild card uh, draft, he was there. 100% he was there. I didn't end up pulling the trigger on my wild card. And I'm glad I didn't. But I'm still in a bit of decision paralysis. The reason I didn't, I've still got my triple Liverpool defence. Um, I listened to... What kind of an idiot would do that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I, I listened to uh, Tom on who got the assist. And he was, he was very adamant early in the week on Monday because he, he put out content before the Villa West Ham game that he was wild carding at... 7.30 or 7 o'clock, whatever the deadline is tonight. So I might as well wait and just copy his team, to be honest with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, um, I thought I can hold out a little bit. I've got two free transfers. I'm also happy to take a hit. Are you possibly wildcarding tonight then? Uh, nah, not tonight. I'll, I'll wait and see what happens on the weekend. Um, there are a few kind of things I want, I want to move around. So Kane to Aubameyang is a potential move for me. Um, Sterling, uh, I was looking at Sterling, Madison and Kane out for KDB, Son and Aubameyang or uh, or Aguero instead of uh, Aubameyang. But then it's not really an upgrade, right? Kane and Sterling can easily return me points this week. So I, I don't feel like it's a justified move. Um, so I don't know where to go with it. And, and I think the only way I can really make drastic changes rather than um, sideways moves is by breaking my back five of Edison, uh, Zinchenko and the three Liverpool to make structural changes. Otherwise, I'm going sideways from Sterling to Mane or Salah, which is sideways. Kane to Aubameyang, which is sideways. Um, I don't have enough money to go from Madison to a Sun or um, Sun or KDB. So I can't even make that sideways move. Sebios to Campwell, McGinn. It was, it's all sideways. So everything, unless I restructure the entire team, is moving sideways. And those moves don't always end up paying off because how many times is Harry Kane going to blank in a row? Not many. How many times is Sterling going to blank in a row? Not many. It doesn't feel like I'm, um, I'm forcing a move there. It feels like I'm forcing a move rather than doing something to drastically improve my squad. A big four game weeks for, for Harry, not so much tomorrow, but... I've said on the previous pods, I'd look into captain him for the three game weeks afterwards. However, there is a possibility that come deadline today, he might not be in my team. One of the things I'm I'm looking at, and for all the talk of big at the back, is how a lot of us are missing out on the captaincies at the moment. If it be hitting captaincies, this big at the back thing wouldn't even be a problem. My rank could be a lot better. Yeah, I've missed three captains, there is, I think. There is a clear obvious captaincy choice this week in my opinion and it's Sergio Aguero mm -hmm. having had the break in the week I think he he's, uh, looks an absolute lock to start this weekend against Watford one of the things I could do I've got 0 0.2 in the bank is drop Zinchenko down to a 4.5 and fire Aguero in for Kane and then captain Aguero this weekend and it might it might be then a case did I go back to a Kane or Son for next week? Because then I would be stuck with the only captaincy options in my team are Manchester City assets. Which is not terrible, but you do want a, a flexible option, I think. So I'd probably then be going either De Bruyne to Son next week, which I'm not keen to get De Bruyne out of, or going back from Aguero to, to Kane. And then it feels a little bit like I've wasted two transfers. If, if Aguero didn't yeah. smash it tomorrow, yeah. I'd feel like I've wasted two transfers, yep. knowing that I probably do want to captain Harry next week at home to Southampton. I I, um, I moved from uh, Halle, uh to Pukki and then Wilson back to Halle. I feel like I wasted two transfers there. 100% I feel like I wasted two transfers. So doing that hokey cokey doesn't necessarily work just to cover one week's captaincy. When Sterling is likely to get you returns... Um, if I if I was to get uh, Aguero in for Kane, which I looked at, it means my midfield would then be KDB and Son, and I wouldn't be able to afford Mane, which I don't mind too much right now because I've got the triple Liverpool defence. I don't need Mane. But that's three changes, and then I'm taking a minus four. A minus four I don't think is justified at this point. I could make the, the simple move, which is uh, Kane to Aguero and then Sterling to um, 
to a Sun or a Bamiyang, but then I've just swapped two City assets for a City and a Spurs for a City and a Spurs. Doesn't seem. But with about two million next year in the bank. Yeah. Uh, well. <sighs> Yeah, about yeah, it'll give me a couple well, of million. About extra. a million and a half, yeah. But then what am I going to do with the money? I, I want to, I want to get money. Spend it. <laughs> yeah. Improve, improve the rest of your team. It, it, at that point, I'm now making three or four changes, and then that's like fucking wild card territory, isn't it? Really. Structurally, I've got two City at the back: Edison and Zinchenko, and three Liverpool. I want to get down to one City at the back, with two Liverpool in defence. And then AN are the defender. And I'm going to go back to 3-4-3. Three, three. That's what I'm thinking. So I'll only have Edison in goal. Um, which I'm not overly keen with their defensive issues. Um, they'll still keep a few clean sheets. But with Stones out now. And, and all the rest of the stuff that's well publicised. And then I'll probably lose Van Dyke Because Robbo and Trent are just asset machines. Uh, assist machines let's say. Losing Edison by the way is a quick way for you to save some money. Yeah, downgrading to Pope gives me a little bit more up front. Well, it's not just that. It's, there's options there at City that are cheaper as well. Sure, but set and forget consistency. Yeah, I get that. That's it. It's unlikely in most games to be picking up more than the six, is he? No. You could have Otamendi cheaper. Yeah, all right, he might be a calamity, but he might get you a goal or two as well, right? Mm. And then he might be hitting bonuses. Edison's unlikely to be picking up too many bonuses. Yeah, we know he's probably going to still keep the most clean sheets. Yep. But yep. That's, a, that's a quick way for you to save a little bit. A little bit, um, but then who do who do you go for in goal? I don't really like any of the four point five options. Any of them. Pope, I suppose, at four point six is probably yeah. the best. And Tom Heaton's all right. Difficult fixture this week, but then they've got a decent run afterwards. Mm. That's just, that's just, you know if you want to start firing in new people like Mane's, you you can have to make sacrifices. Yeah, somewhere, and the goalkeeper right? is one that like, like my wild card draft did have uh, Pope in goal. I don't think you should you should particularly have uh, a goalkeeper from one of the top sides when there are cheaper defensive assets at the same club. That's an interesting philosophical point. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't go for Kepa, would you, with like Tomori emerging potentially? No, no, no. You know, if Aurea played regularly, you wouldn't go for Loris instead. Loris is, is arguably is a decent shout because he, uh, he is priced in a, a similar to the sort of the elder year olds, Vertonghen's, who are your more solid picks there, if you will. But no, I mean, Edison wouldn't be a consideration for me uh, more expensive than, say, an Otamendi or a Zinchenko. I think my most likely move, what I'm going to end up doing with this team this week, is actually going Zinchenko to Otamendi. Yeah, and rolling the other transfer. I think so. Um, one other idea I'm, I'm pulling around with, because if I'm going to lose Mount this weekend, as it would stand, I'm going to be starting with probably Dendonka or Stevens, which I'm really not keen on, is... To fire in Campwell, I need to get a little bit more money off. So one of the ideas I'm pondering is Van Dyke to Matip. Yeah, another not a bad option and bad shot because he's five five, right? It's, a, it's a, another million saving. Um, but yeah. I feel like just, and that's, just on that's that, now I, we're I, breaking big at the I back. I actually feel taking Van Dyke out this week is dangerous. Mm -hmm. I I think aerially Chelsea are very suspect at set pieces. Yeah. I think that's a little dangerous. Not that Matic especially because Rudiger is out now as well, uh, so that well, makes it even uh, more of an issue. I really feel like um, we are going round in circles a little bit in our own minds, which is which is fine because that's what this game is about. Wait for the press conference. Notes, I'm waiting to. I'm, I'm wanting to give the listeners value. So are we kind of saying don't make sideways moves? Now, potentially, if you've got cheaper options at the same club in those kind of defensive positions, maybe move to the cheapest. Go big at the back, but get the cheapest from the big at the back. No, not necessarily. Apart from Trent and Robbo, because they just uh, machined. <laughs> so I, I really am struggling to make sure we're giving people value. And I don't know if our rambling is just us doing ourselves. We can ramble. In. It's OK. Um, yeah, I think Matip Van Dyke is a fair argument, though longer term I, I'm worried about it for this weekend if I take Van Dijk out but that would allow me to fire in for free transfer at Cantwell over then Donker before his price probably depreciates tonight as well and I'll get Cantwell the other end so there's some value in that to be earned back Who, as whose well. price would depreciate sorry. then Donker will, will probably finally go down in price tonight I would have thought you he's think so? right on the edge yeah mm. differential team yes let's talk about it so had a decent week, um, mainly because I won the argument on this podcast last Friday to Captain Hyunming Sun over Pepe. 
And uh, Sonny obviously returned as 32. Yep. 59 points. Overall, not too well, bad. Good job that Sonny did get his 32. Otherwise, we'd have been looking at a Suge score, wouldn't we? Yeah, exactly. I we mean, had... the differential team is above me in the overall rank at the moment. Uh, 40, that's how bad 40, life is. 40 of our 59 points came from spares because we got eight points from Hugo in goal as well. Oh, wow. The only other return we had was... Um, uh, returns was assists for Richarlison and Doherty, but we're only Doherty. four pointers because Doherty was a one point appearance, and I think Richarlison got booked if I remember correctly. We have some injury issues in the squad at the moment. Stones, Origi, and Martial. Yeah, and we don't really know if Chelsea are going to play um, a back four, a back three, or if Zuma's even going to be in that team. There are bits of this team that I don't like, uh, like Tielemans. I think what we should do this week Tell me. is we should go... John Stones is clearly definitely injured, no doubt about it. Fire Otamendi in for his place. Yeah, he's at 9.5% or something, is he? Otamendi? Yeah. At 2%. Oh, okay, 2%. I so thought he'd to clarify, to we can only buy players uh, only less under than 10%. 10%. Percent. And I think we should wildcard tonight. And the main reason I think we should wildcard tonight is because we can get Callum Wilson in this team. Yes, he's at 9.5. He's the one at 9.5% we were looking at, I feel like. And I think we could hold on to Vardy's ownership at the moment is 8.5%. Origi's is, um, sorry, Haller's is 6 point something. Yeah. And Callum Wilson right now is 9.5% ownership. If he scores tonight at Southampton, he will not be 9.5% come tomorrow morning. And I would like to fire him in because I think that front three of Ale, Vardy and Callum Wilson will bring us nice long-term consistency. Yeah, I'm up for that. We'll do the... When we're sure we do the wild card? We will do live the wild card stream. during the live stream tonight. Who is watching Southampton Bournemouth tonight? Switch the commentary off and switch YouTube on. We'll be live streaming us watching the game and having some rants and bants and wild carding the differential team tonight. Any changes you're making for your Southern Softies? You had a good week last week. I, I had a bad week last week. I um I accidentally left the armband on Pookie, who scored 24 Fucking points. Unbelievable. Half my, half you're my returns. So lucky. I bought in that uh James and uh Moise Keane. Moise Keane would didn't even start. Callum uh Calvert Lewin took his place and James is now injured, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there. Um <laughs> that was a that was a good yeah, two free chance. I've still got twenty five points on you on this. Uh but it was a bad week. You got forty four, you should have got about thirty four. Um he Suj messaged me Saturday lunchtime and went, Fucking hell, uh I can't log in yet. I think I've left the captaincy on Pookie. You're so lucky. Yeah, man. <laughs> What can you say? But this is the game. Uh, but, you know, City performed so badly last week as well. Uh, and my Liverpool defence didn't get me a clean sheet. Luca Dean popping up with a null point. It wasn't a good week for the Northerners last week at all. No, oh, across the board. Southern Softies is now making a comeback. I hit uh, 67 minus yeah. four. Could have been 73 minus four had I played Diop instead of Zuma. Um, but I had some good returners, uh, assists from Captain Kane, or Bamiang's two goals, Sun's two goals, Mount goal, assist Maitland Niles, clean sheet Heaton. Yeah, back on the move. I might roll because defensively it doesn't look too bad this week with uh, Maitland Niles at home to Villa, Dunk away to Newcastle. I'd probably go Diop at home to United. I still have 2.1 million in the bank. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about firing out Cathcart, who's sitting on my bench doing nothing, and um, flame throwing in Mr. Doing Bits, Patrick Van Arnholt, for uh, two consecutive home games, starting sure. with Wolves, who look very shot shy at the moment at the weekend. That's my most likely move. Interesting. I've got 2.1 uh, million in the bank as well, or two point, yeah, 2.1 in the bank. How is it that we've both got the same amount of money in the bank? You have no idea how you have that team when you can have six players in Liverpool and Man City and you have 2.1 million in the bank. Yeah, I suppose I was, uh, you know, taking it easy. On Stop you. taking it easy. I'm coming for you. <laughs> I might have to uh, hit the wild card button and go for it. Because this with this team, it's so... Because we're restricted with the number of players we can pick from, I don't think... 
um, the wild card is necessarily as valuable because we're man maneuvering around in a smaller pool of players necessarily. So I might have to do that. We'll see. It's all about time today. You know, got work to do as my well. We? My front six this time next week could be Pepe and Aubameyang, Son and Kane, Mount and Abraham. That's tasty. I'm coming for you. That's tasty. I'm coming for you. Yeah, my front uh, six could be uh, KDB, Aguero, Salah, and Mane. This is this is actually now quite a decent <laughs> fight. It's quite a decent fight. It's the the value in the Chelsea players is offering something for me, and a few others emerging Plus, uh, like Son. And I think Son as well, nine point five. He's good value. Yeah. So there we go. Anything else to add on the final plan? No. Let's just let everybody know. So if you're listening to this on the Friday uh, about. 7.30 are we going live? 7.15? 7.30? 8 o'clock kickoff. 8 o'clock kickoff. Let's say 7.30. Really? That early? Okay, 7.45. We're going to be on for the whole game. Yeah, that's true. Will this go on at like 5 to 8? Live streams happening 5 to 8, as James has called it. It gives us a little bit extra to uh, have a beer before the game then, maybe. Um, oh, shit, we, we need we'll to get be, some beers. We'll be live streaming tonight with Southampton Bournemouth um, and uh, running through uh, the game and watching it. We're going to look at the weekend fixtures. We uh, shall. Something a little bit different where we're going to kind of have some chats about things to watch out for this week. We obviously can't advise on transfers because deadline will be gone. Yes. But we can, we, we'd, we'd have a run through the little fixtures and, and look at pointers to look out for this week and just have a general FPL chit chat. I'll probably talk about Spurs at Olympiacos a little bit because it wasn't fucking great. No. <laughs> um, yeah, join us. We'll have a party. Exactly. Matt, are you coming? We're having a party tonight. Man, Charles, in. He is, is, is Man, you sound so enthusiastic. You've just completely sold that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a success. You is a success. I think uh, one of the things that we could do tonight with Manchild's consent, possibly maybe, is wildcard your team, Manchild, because it's rubbish, and let the community pick and help you pick players through oh. some polls. We can put it out there and whoever votes for who, A and B, A, B testing your wildcard, Manchild. You ready for it? Yeah. I, like my team. I don't know what's wrong with it. A lot. It doesn't get any points. It does. <laughs> Everybody, thanks for tuning in on the YouTube and podcast, wherever you're downloading iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, etc., etc., etc. Do share the podcast with as many people as you can. We want to get one million people to download the podcast <laughs> next week. Uh, so if you've got any friends, you know, it all helps. Like, subscribe, share comment uh, and uh, we'll try and get back to as many as we can other than that good luck tinkering and we'll see you tonight ciao for now cue music man child the fantasy football show